analysis. Okay, so this is about the analytical PD. So how does that relate to the stability of numerical schemes? It turns out that when we apply a numerical scheme onto the Fourier uh, series, it has a similar but slightly different effect as the analytical derivatives. So let's take an example. Let's look at an example of a finite difference. So again, my u is equal to a Fourier series representation u hat of k times e to the i k x. And I know my uh, du dx analytically would be equal to u hat of k times i k times e to the i k x. Now let's take a look at if I apply a finite difference scheme. Okay, if I have a delta x, my xk is equal to, not k, let me use uh, uh, j as my grid point, is equal to j delta x. So uh, I have introduced the grid spacing of delta x over here. Okay, and uh, uh, uj, uh, let's define it as, uh, uh, define it as u, at x equal to xj. Now, what is uh, what is my uj plus one minus uj minus one divided by two delta x? What is uh, the second order central difference scheme due to the Fourier series? So let's try to work it out. All right. Okay. So uh, again, we are just uh, plugging in the definition. So u hat of k is the same, and uh, e to the i k, now j plus one delta x. So that is my u of j plus one according to the definition. U of j minus one, according to the same definition, is exactly the same, except for I'll replace my j plus one with j minus one, right? The whole thing divided by two delta x. Okay, so here, what's interesting is that you can look at this and this and translate uh, this e to the a plus b into e to the a times e to the b. Right? So the plus sign here and minus sign here can easily be manipulated. So uh, the result is going to be e, uh, summation of u hat of k e to the i k j delta x times e to the i k delta x. Right? So basically, I'm just uh, splitting the plus inside the exponent and uh, uh, translate that into a product outside the exponent. Well, uh, the second term corresponding to u of j minus one can be manipulated in the same way, except for instead of a plus one, I have a minus one. So everything here is exactly the same. So I can combine these two terms and just to have minus e to the minus i k delta x over here. So, so basically uh, applying the uh, blue formula, I really, and collect the terms, I get this. And uh, this whole thing divided by two delta x. Okay, any questions on this manipulation here? It's just the uh, algebra using uh, exponential function. Okay, so now what is this? How can this be simplified? Uh, we all know that uh, the e to the i times something can be represented uh, in sinusoidal functions, right? E to the i times something is equal to cosine of that something plus i times sine of that same thing. 
And in particular, the cosine term is the same between this and this, right? Because cosine is a uh, even function. The value is exactly the same, no matter I have a minus sign here or not. So the real components of these two exponential functions actually cancel out because they are both cosines. And the sine part is the one that does not cancel out. Actually, sine function is an even function, right? So, so let me uh, do it here. Because the sine function is an even is a, is an odd function, the values actually uh, add up to each other. So it's equal to the real part is a cosine of k delta x minus cosine of k delta x. Uh, they basically cancel out, and uh, plus i times sine of uh, k delta x minus sine of minus k delta x. So sine of minus k delta x is actually plus uh, sine of k delta x. So it's twice of sine k delta x, right? So we plug this in into our original red formula. Uh, the finite difference can be represented as summation of exactly the same thing as we had before but here uh, i have a two cancels with this two so i have delta x i no longer have two and i have i times sine of k delta x all right okay so I think we have simplified to the simplest of uh, what we can uh, simplify, right? And uh, just uh, um, one thing, uh, well, I think we can still simplify a little bit. So uh, because uh, you see, um, this, so this function here, uh, is actually if if you represent uh, if you represent uj as a Fourier series, right? Uj would be a summation of u hat of k e to the uh, i k j delta x. So basically, this term is exactly what you would have when you expand uh, uj into Fourier series and that coefficient is multiplied by something like that so that's in our finite difference and if you look back in our analytical derivative my u is represented in the Fourier series and this particular Fourier series coefficient is multiplied by this ik and in here my multiply instead of ik is i sine k delta x divided by delta x so let's think a little bit of the relation. 